Welcome to Morning Joe with Tom, with your host, Thomas Chappelle. Get ready to listen to real-life stories from inspiring leaders who have overcome incredible challenges to rise to the occasion. If you're ready to add some pep to your morning with a new outlook on leadership, then grab your cup of coffee. It's time to be inspired. Here's your host, Thomas Chappelle. Hey, Sean, it's so good to see you again. And thank you for coming back to the podcast. Uh, I just really would like to kind of share uh, with the listeners today just why that you're kind of coming back and and that journey that kind of led you to there and eventually how that those folks can kind of join you alongside of you on that journey. Uh, but for all the listeners out there, Sean is a huge, I'm a huge fan of Sean. Uh, and I followed him for uh, a couple of, couple of, maybe a couple of, couple of three years now, I guess. Uh, and the exciting part is how God is using him and, and that journey of him finding his purpose and going in and going in and leaning forward into that purpose. So with that, uh, Sean, I would just invite you to kind of discuss with the listeners a little bit about that purpose, if you don't mind. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for having me here, Tom. This is this is really incredible. And I, I just I feel this feels really, really good. So, you know, one of the things that God has done over the course of the last 18 years in my life is he's empowered me to do some pretty cool things online and with reach and so many of the different things that I've taught over time. But one of the things that's happened over the course of the last couple of years is a realization inside of me, you know, people will come to me and they'll say, Hey, Sean, you know, uh, how do you, how do you do this? And it's a seven step process or whatever. And I will give the, I'll give the process because this is what I actually do. But so often I leave out what's the most important thing is that I was inspired to do whatever it was by God, that there's something that I'm reaching out to God or I got information from him in the morning or in a dream or or whatever. And that's the piece that consistently gets left out, not necessarily by design, but it gets left out. The more that I reflect on it, I realize that that's the most important thing that all of the steps are just a matter of walking out whatever it is that God placed inside of me. And so what I think about is when somebody else needs to implement something, should they go do the seven steps or should they just get their inspiration? And if they get their inspiration from God, it's almost like they don't need the seven steps anymore. They'll find the seven steps. Uh, and mm -hmm. so this this mental realization for me, it, it just feels like an inspired um, uh, in, inspiration is that, if, if we can just point people to the creative God, the relationship, the creative relationship with him. So many people know God. So we're not saying you got to introduce God, right? But to say, look, God made us in his image. And if that means he made us in his image, you know, the Bible doesn't say God made us in his image minus this, 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 and this. It says he made us in, in, in his image. Well, what is God's image? Well, God is light. And God speaks things into command, in, into existence. Uh, God is creative. God is logical. God is mathematical. God knows how to use the forces in the universe. If that's the case, that we're made in his image, do we not have some measure of light, some measure of creativity, some measure of, measure of logic, some measure of just being able to get things done, some measure of inspiration? And so I feel like if people can realize that God's already placed that inside of them, now we don't want to go out and be little gods on our own, but we want to tap into that power from him, then they can become creative like that. And to me, that's the most important thing. The steps will just follow. You know, when you say that, what I what 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 brings to mind is you're like the companion to that person as they're going through that journey. You are you are just directing and saying this is the way. And yes, maybe that process sh you know uh, showed them a path to kind of like do something. But it's almost like you're saying this is the process is less important. Connection with God. 
is what is important. And I'm here to walk alongside with you through that process. Yeah, absolutely. I've never, never said it that way, but that's so beautiful. And you have such incredible insight um, to see that because in fact, I feel like this is learning experience for me to be able to think about that really is what my role is because I'm obviously not the inspirer. I'm not God, right? I'm, I, I don't even believe myself to be like this great mentor, but this feels really powerful that I can come next to someone and say, look, here's where you can get the inspiration from God. Here's why it works. Here's how you can kind of put it inside of yourself. And then the other thing that I happen to be good at, God has given me the ability to simplify things. So we say, yeah. hey, now you have this, this inspiration and you kind of know what the steps might be. Instead of taking six months to take a, a huge course to do the hundred steps to get it done, what if you could simplify it and just see it in your mind's eye in 10 minutes and then go implement something in a few days that takes other people six months to do for some people. Wow. That would be like instantaneous creation. If you could take something, it takes other people six months to do, but it only takes you three days because you can get inspired by God. You can get a quick understanding of all the steps. Just go do all the important things in three days instead of six months. There you go. I mean, you know, creation took seven days. You know, you're only using half of that time. <laughs> to yeah. create what your purpose is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you know, here's the, here's the thing. Here's what I love about creation. And God just showed me this a few days ago, okay? That we're created in his image, right? We're created in his image and, and he created the earth and everything in six days, but he, he did it in segments. So the first mm -hmm. day he created the light farmer correctly. The second day he, he created the earth and the waters. And then the third day he, he created the trees and the fruit and all of that. So he did this thing in segments, but he, he did it in a day. The difference between God and us is the materials that he had to work with. So he had the materials of all the nuclear forces in the universe. So he was able to speak to those forces and they made light. The next day, he had access to all of the atoms in the universe. So he was able to speak to them and they made earth. The third day, he had access to all the DNA in the plants. So he spoke that into existence. The difference with us, we can speak things into existence. The only difference is that the material that we have to work with is different. So for example, the material that I have to work with is the electrons that we're using right here to create. I'm able to speak things into existence with the material that, that I have right here, which is you flipping the recorder on, it's us uploading this to the internet. And then the material that I actually have to work with is that the, that the internet allows this broadcast to go out to 216 nations or whatever. The difference here is that I just have to work with what I have to work with. You work with what you have to work with. And any listener works with what they have to work with right here. And they're able to create things very, very, very quickly, not as gods themselves, but by following the God inspired blueprint for fast creation. Yeah. Well, you know, and this is part of what I hear because uh, I like to listen to what's been said. And then I like to look for what's not been said uh, in, you know, articulated in words necessarily, but implied, which is what you're saying is, is that God is such of order that, why did he not create man on the first day before he created light? Mm -hmm. So you're basically taking that and saying, hey, as that companion person walking alongside, don't just start shooting off emails. And I'm just using an example. Don't just start shooting off emails without thinking about why you're doing it. There's, there's a process and thinking through that process. And so, yes, you're you're trying to simplify things, but you're trying to get people to critically think about things and find that alignment between uh, what they're trying to produce for their purpose and the connection that they have with God. So that's a beautiful marriage that I see there. Awesome. God is a God of order. God is a God of creativeness, but he's also a God of order. And I think one of the things that happens in our entrepreneurial world is that people classify themselves as, you know, I'm a creative, I'm an entrepreneur. And so entrepreneurs do creative things and they go out and break things. 
But because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm not focused. I'm not, uh, I don't have order. I don't keep my books in order. You know, I'm unorganized. But the thing is, God did both. And I believe, I, I believe very strongly that God, it, God is our example. Um, I, I want to be careful that I'm not sacrilegious and, and put something, in, <laughs> put something here that's not. But I think that we could probably find a pattern in the Bible that says just about anything God does or did, or anything that Jesus does or did, we actually have the ability to do the same thing. That God, mm -hmm. God doesn't have these hidden, he does have hidden secrets, but you know, he doesn't hold us to a standard that we can't live up to. He doesn't ask us to do anything that we can't do. And I truly believe that without nitpicking this, I think that just about everything that God does he has given us the power to do it in some microcosm of it and be able to to mimic that he you know he doesn't live a particular life and then say okay well you know you humans that were made in my image you can't do these particular things so if that's the case how do we step up such that we can be powered by god not on our own but be powered by god to do the godly things i mean even jesus said and i don't I don't, I can't quote the scriptures, but he basically said, go out there and do all the things that I did. You lay mm -hmm. hands on people, have healing. You know, you can do the yep. same miracles that I did. He basically said, if not word for word, you can go do everything. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, he actually said, you can do greater do things than mm -hmm. I did. Well, look at all of the things that Jesus did. If he really said to me, I can do greater things than he did, then it's not sacrilegious for me to say, look, I'm going to tap into his power. I'm going to tap into the Holy Spirit's power. I'm going to tap into God's power. And I'm actually going to do what he told me to do, which is do greater things than he did. That's empowering. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we've discussed this uh, prior to this podcast uh, and all, but, uh, you know, Maybe you can kind of talk to the listener a little bit about these different. Uh, uh, you have kind of like a meeting setup, uh, and I know I know it as worthy warrior, uh, but uh, but you've like put a spin on it, like I've, uh, and I don't mean that in a in a cartoony sort of way. I mean it in a developmental sort of way. They really kind of grounds people, business people, leaders, and such, right back into faith so that they start growing in a different direction. So would you take some time and kind of explore that a little bit more? Well, tell me what you mean by by the spin. So like, the, yeah, what exactly so, are you seeing that? that so what, So I'll give you a for instance. Within, within uh, Worthy Warrior, uh, of which I'm a part of, and it, it it's it's a membership uh, group, uh, but what I have found is this is a place, and and I'm going to kind of pull back on the scripture. You know, it says, "Forsake not gathering yourselves together." Well, whenever I when most people think of that, they think that it's church, right? And and I agree, there's an aspect of it that's for church, but there's also a chance, and this is what you've provided to. Uh, business people up to this point is a means for us to get together to be together and share word share thoughts feelings fears prayers all of that so that's where i'm kind of in my mind you've moved beyond just saying we got to think on all of this uh like we've gone into church and we're just reading scripture You've taken it to the application of scripture. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the spin. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I've just felt like I had just an inspired moment just now when when I heard you say that. Um, because I've I've when I used to do the regular faith based calls, I used to open the call and and basically tell people, and I'll give my spiel right now. I would say, look, hey, you know, thanks for being here at the faith based call. And just so excited to be able to share with you. But, you know, what I find is that when we go to church on, on Sunday morning or Saturday night or Friday night or whenever we go to church or synagogue or wherever we go, um, the, the pastor, the preacher is normally talking about family things. They're talking about love. They're talking about treating people right. They're preaching right out of the word. But 
there's just such a small percentage of entrepreneurs and business people in that room that most of their messages are not about how to run your business. And so these faith-based calls are just digging into what does the Bible say about running your business? And so that was the flash that came to me when you just said that, because I hadn't even realized that that's being now applied to community. And so what I was just thinking is you're absolutely right. We're called to go to church as a community. But one of the things I was talking about just the other day is that, and we know this, the church is not the building. The church is not the building. It's the community who so often we think of it as the, as the building. Let's say that we go to church. Well, church, I want to say something that some people might criticize again. Your church is more, church is not everything that we need if it's just gathering. You know, let's say <laughs> women need to be able to talk, women talk with each other sometimes. Men need to be able to have man talk with people. People that are trying to diet might need to have diet talk with people that are having their challenges. Somebody that's having challenges in relationships need to have relationship people. It's not all going to happen under the church building. Well, what is there for Christians who are business people? Because so often business people come together on a common business topic. Product creators come together or speakers come together, et cetera, et cetera. The other problem that we have, let's face it, in the Christian community is that as soon as you get 10 Christians together, all of a sudden they start looking for their differences. They say, well, you know, I can drink a glass of wine and, you know, you're a sinner if you have more than a drop. Um, you know, you have somebody else that says, I speak in tongues. Somebody else says, oh, you know, tongues don't exist. I'm going to go in the basement and chant. And and I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of making fun of it because, you know, I could be on both sides of so many, many different issues. It's the truth of the matter is I personally believe that a lot of these issues don't matter at the end of the day, that, that Christians in their denominations, they come up with these pillars and they say, these are my five pillars. Well, let's face it. Jesus is the main pillar and almost the only pillar of Christianity. So what happens is in so many, and this is what I see out there is, and I thought this when I first started the faith-based calls like 15 years ago, is as soon as you get 10 Christians together, instead of uniting, they start saying, well, how am I different? How am I different? How am I different? And you get these fights that start. Right. So one of the things that I've done with my tribe for a really long time is said, look, we have a no theology policy. We're all going to come together as Christians so that we can have this community where instead of just working on diet or marriage or whatever our problems are, we're going to say, look, we're a Christian community and we're going to share these business ideas. Um, but uh, until very recently, that's all just been teaching. It hasn't been community. And so what's been beautiful, what you've been a part of recently um, has been um, building building a community of people. And I'll tell you this, you didn't ask, but I'll tell you this, you know, we were kind of talking a few minutes ago about the idea that entrepreneurs kind of find themselves as I'm a creative, I break things, I make new things, I'm constantly starting new things. But so often, and I'm guilty of this, we don't have order in our lives. You know, we're, we're rushing. Sometimes we're behind. We're, we're late for things. We don't keep our books in order. There's, there's a lot of things that we, as entrepreneurs, oftentimes allow to fall to the side. And God's really been working on me to say, look, you've got to have more of those things. Well, candid admission, one of the things I'm very difficult at is things like community and social media and social network and chit chat and those kinds of things. And I think for a long time, I've had the attitude, okay, well, I'm just going to excel at what I'm, I'm good at because we should all excel at what we're good at. But I think one of the things that God has been working on me on, and I don't know exactly what this looks like, but is to say, Sean, if you're going to do everything that I want you to do, if you're going to be everything that I'm crafting you into being, you are, you're going to have to be a little bit more community focused. And so Honestly, what you're seeing right now, Tom, Tom, is 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 maybe version point one <laughs> of what God is doing in me. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Just really trying to bring people together and give them a place where they can share as Christians, leave theology behind, share as Christians the pains of being a Christian entrepreneur, get inspired by godly things, and be able to do more in more in business as a Christian. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's so needed because I've been a part of other communities and networks and, and all, because where I live, those things exist all over the place, but they get so typified around a particular person and 
then that person kind of becomes the thing. And then people like, oh, like Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. Loved a lot of reading of his material, loved a lot of his early work, things like that. But now when you mention that, it's like there's it's like people just like surround him like like he was a prophet or something like that. And and the reality is he has to shower every day the same as we do. He puts his pants one leg at a time. And what I've learned from Worthy Warrior from from your outset is you encourage discussion you encourage internal that internal debate with each other and it sometimes goes extends offline uh there's there's members there that 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 we've we've had offline conversations on it that kind of led to productive conversations uh so i think you're moving beyond the inspiration and i think that you are that you are kind of causing people to want to put in the perspiration of the event and not just trying to be cheesy on that comment but but the fact is is that is that i don't think that that worthy warrior is about how good we are it's how good we could be if that makes sense no that that's that's just incredible i mean that's you know really that sparks you know paul's writings we look at Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, we, you know, we look at Corinthians, the, the letters that he wrote, um, very little in those letters was about, wow, how wonderful you are right now. But most of it was, this is where you can go to. Right. And I don't think that that's all because they did everything wrong. I mean, obviously some of the things that he taught were a response to people messing up, but I really believe that it was about growing bigger. And, you know, you look at Timothy, the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, those letters, I mean, Timothy seemed to have a lot of things figured out, right? I mean, he had what some people might say is the number one church in the whole uh, the whole empire there uh, at that time. And he was good at what he did. Apparently, he was a good pastor and was a good preacher. But what did, what, what did Paul do? He poured into him and he said, do this and do this and do this. And so that you can grow up and that you can be better. Isn't that what God wants us to do as we go through our life? Is that we tap into him and we're able to, to impact more people. We're, we're able to grow up. We're able we're able to be better. I think that's what God calls us to do is is to become better um, for His kingdom. Yep, you're just absolutely walking out what Christ did with the disciples. He didn't send them singularly. He sent them together. That's right. That's right. We need each other, and so often online. It, it is so easy online because I'm working in my cubicle. I'm working at the coffee shop. I'm working in, you know, mo most of the time, I think most people that are listening to this, you're the only person in your family that's entrepreneurial. So you're not going to have four people in a room doing an entrepreneurial thing together just simply because that's just the way it is. It, it's a very, it's a very singular type of thing here, but mm. if we can connect with thousands of other people who are singularly working in their own homes or in their own coffee shops or in their own basements, we can connect them. Then they become, they become a network. And I think this just sparks, you know, you look at some of the countries that have to have an underground church. Well, they're underground, but they're meeting in different people's basements and they're meeting in different people's places so that they can come together. They're meeting in coffee shops. They're coming together. God created us as a community. God is a community, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, again, you know, when we, you know, have a theological argument about exactly what does that look like, but the truth of the matter is some way, somehow he's a community. And when he created us, he created man and woman as a community, he created man. And it was like, ah, man can't be alone. He needs somebody else. And not only did he have community with wife and husband, he said community with children. And we see in the book of Genesis very, very quickly, there were generations, you know, people were having 10 children, 20 children, populating the earth very, very quickly and creating these tribes very, very quickly. God didn't make it like, you know, people are going to be a million years all by themselves before there was community. He created, their community happened. I think community happened very, 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 very quickly. And even before there were children, before there were tribes, community was God in the garden, Adam and Eve and God, he communed with them at the mm -hmm. end of the day. 
It was community from the very beginning. And I don't believe God wants to change that. It's going to be community. It's going to be community into the millennium. It's going to be community where we're in heaven, when we're in our mansions, when there's millions of us, billions of us, maybe it's community. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah, I I can tell you, I'm so excited about what you're doing. Um, if, uh, if folks wanted to get in touch with you about what uh, what it really means to be a part of this community, what's the best way for them to kind of reach out to you today? The best place for the, for folks to go would be exceedingly.io. So it's exceedingly, just like exceedingly abundantly above all things, exceedingly.io. Uh, and if they go there, then they can get plugged into the memberships. And we've got different things. We've got you know community membership. We've got training. Um, I'm also... I'm also on YouTube and we, we're trying to do more and more of the faith-based training right on YouTube. And so, I mean, my goodness, if, if I had to guess there's 70 or 80 faith-based or, or um, it's some motivational trainings right there on YouTube that's available. And I would suggest people go to uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, they'd be able to get incredible value and be able to tap into some of the things that we're talking about uh, right now. And the plan really is over the next course of the next uh, few months is to create a lot more YouTube that's following a lot of the topics that we're just we're just chatting about right here. And I think that's a great entry point uh, for right. people to 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 tap into. I was going to say my work, but my interpretation of what really God's been pouring into me over the last years. And then especially these last few months, I just feel like I'm getting downloaded a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to just keep inside of myself and it die with me when I die one day, but instead that I can pass it on. And so we're doing a lot with YouTube because it's so easy to just disseminate it to the entire world. People are able to listen just like uh, you and I are, are kind of chatting. Anybody's hearing the sound of my voice, they're listening right now. And then they can, they can do that as well. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have like five minutes left of this podcast. I'd like to give you the opportunity to say to the listeners what God has been putting on your heart that could make an impact in their life as they listen to this today. Because you've said a lot of amazing things, but I would like to end this by leaving the listener with some things that God is telling you to our listeners. Wow, that feels like a great responsibility. Yeah. And I'm, you know, in the back of my head, I'm just thinking, okay, well, you know, out of a thousand different things, what's the one thing? And 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 the thing that pops into my head right now, okay, is that so many entrepreneurs that are listening are, I truly believe that what I see, what I see with with my clients, with what I see with so many people that I talk with, is that they have this idea of something that they want to do. God's called them to do something, whether it's a Bible study or it's a podcast or it's a it's it's a worldwide you know, event, whatever it is, God's called them to do it. And the craziest thing is when I have a private conversations with people, uh, so many times I ask them, well, when did you get this call? And they're like five years ago, 10 years ago. And now that I have more experience in the business, I have found that sometimes I'll talk to somebody five years ago and they tell me about their dream. If I talk with them today, I say, how's your dream coming? Their dream is exactly where it was five years ago. And so if I'm speaking to somebody right now that you have a dream and you know that it hasn't moved, and the big reason that it hasn't moved is that it looks like in order for you to do this, there's a thousand steps. And, you know, we can talk about how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time all day long. But the truth of the matter is when you have this huge thing and you, you go into doing the very first step, it just feels really daunting. So one of the things that God has given me, even in these last few days, is this idea of, okay, well, what if instead of taking five years and having to study and to have a thousand steps, what if, as we were talking about earlier, we could say, well, what can we do in three days to make this thing begin to happen? Let's say that you want to be a worldwide speaker and you say, well, the only way I can be a worldwide speaker is to do these thousand steps. Well, actually, I would disagree. Best way to become a worldwide speaker would be to turn the camera on, speak for 20 minutes, publish it to YouTube, and share that YouTube video with every single person that you know for seven days straight, guess what? You'll probably land in 20 countries. You say, well, that's not where I wanna go. 
imagine if you did that every single week for the next three years, you were to create a video. And now that you have more people and more people and more people that know about you, and if you actually create good things that people want to share, you get, wow, in three years, where, where could you possibly be? And we don't have to have this huge thousand step plan. Same thing. I talk to people that say, you know, for five years, I've dreamed of making a course. But the problem with making a course is I have to take a three month program. I have to take a big course on how to create a course and I have to do these thousand steps and I do it and I get stuck in the weeds. And six months later, I never have a course. I remember the very first recorded course that I created. I literally, I sat down, I wrote out like a hundred bullet points. I closed the door on my office. I turned on a recorder and I just started speaking. And three hours later, I had three hours worth of, of original training. And two or three days later, I had 10 hours of training. I simply uploaded it online. And in like three days, I had a completed course. And you know, this it's not about me. I'm just using that as an example for somebody that says, wow, I've been trying to create a course for six months, create one in three days. How can, so the biggest thing that I'll give you right now would be to say, take whatever your big goal is and say, if I just had three days to accomplish that goal, how much of it could I set into motion in just three days if I turned everything off and I was laser focused? And I don't want this to just be about the person that's listening and say the creative, the ta talent that I have inside of me. Go back to the example that we talked about earlier. God created everything in six days. He did that by using the materials that he has. We are created in his image. So we have a measure of creativity. We have a measure of being able to create we have a measure of all of the things. I really believe this. We have a measure of all of the things that God has in his creative ability. So take whatever that you have and say, what can I create in three days? What can I create in six days? How quickly can I create it? How quickly can I put it out there? And then continue to do it. I mean, this isn't a launch it in three days and then go back to whatever you do. What if every single week you were to do give, give your all for three days to whatever it is that you're building, what could you build in a year or two or three years? <laughs> wow, that was a lot in five minutes. But to kind of surmise what, what I heard you say is, it sounds like what you're saying is to serve your purpose is to look at your talents that God gave you and then activate through purposeful action. Is Does that sound like what you've said well that's that's pretty much it we have to have purposeful action if we don't if we don't take action we think about the parable of the talents you know two of the guys that got the talents they took action they risked everything okay the result could have been different they could have lost the, ta the talents they could have come back to god and said look i risked them all i did this it, jesus didn't put it in the example for some reason but there certainly could have been a fourth one that god gave some talents to and they risked them they did everything right I don't believe that the message from Jesus would have been any different than it was to the ones that accumulated more. If they came back, they risked it all and they lost it all. The the, the person that got that um, was criticized was the one that just hit it. And so many of us are hiding what's inside of us mm. instead of just putting it out there. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Sean, I really thank you for joining us today. And, uh, Listeners, you will find all of the links and uh, that it was discussed in this uh, in the description. So, Sean, thank you so much. I really enjoyed having you on. And you're always welcome back on this podcast because I know God gives you word and you are so good at delivering it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for having me. I just have such a pleasure talking with you. And um, this has been fun. This has been a really fun time for me. And uh, thank you for giving me this container to share some of what God's poured into me recently. Thank you. Amen. Take care. Yeah. Thanks for listening to Morning Joe with Tom. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. See you next time for more real life stories and inspiration on Morning Joe with Tom.